very much an ambassador for that wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, Beppe told me to practice my surprise look, so here it is. Oh my god! Um, ciao amici! <laughs> Che conosco e dove Prada outlet. <laughs> so, okay, I pretty much, unless I spend the rest of my time up here um, saying things like spaghetti and uh, Campari orange, I pretty uh, much used up all my Italian. Um, Ambassador Tezzi, Beppe, uh, Giovanni, Gabrielle, the great people of Urbino, the officials who are here, and of course, uh, Baldazar Castiglione, who started all of this when he put Urbino on the map with his great book about Renaissance school, Grazie Mille. I am ecstatic to be standing here right now. I'm thrilled to be receiving this huge honor. And I'm also really humbled to be in the company of the previous winners, uh, Martha Raditz, Diane Reem, Michael Weisskopf, Tom Friedman, and um, David Ignatius. I have to say that David and Tom in particular, uh, I should point out because they've been dealing with all my questions and emails over the last few weeks. And the one thing they took to tell me, both of them, was just what a blast they had in Urbino when they went to get their award. Uh, and the one thing that stuck in my mind was they both said that they got parades. I'm sorry, but like, I've always wanted my own parade. Um, I've been in love with Italy for all of my life. Uh, when I was growing up in Liberia, my mom used to tell me stories about the two years that she spent in the 1960s in Rome. And she talked about going to Caracalla, and she talked about, you know, just the sweetness of doing nothing, dolce fa niente. And I remember, in particular, uh, rice is the national dish in Liberia. And I remember I was like five or six years old, and my mom's just saying to me, describing Italy, they cook their rice in butter and cheese. <laughs> and that made a big impression on me. By the time I finally made it to Italy, I was a reporter uh, in the London Bureau of the Wall Street Journal, and I had just arrived and my boss, who was an Italian-American, Larry Ingrassia, who is now the business editor at the New York Times, uh, told me that he wanted me to go to Italy. My first story assignment was to go to Italy and do a story about a fight between tour guides uh, in uh, Venice. Uh, and I'm standing there looking at him, he's like, this is a fight between Italian tour guides who wanted to be the only ones to take tours around Venice and the foreign tour guides who wanted to get into this. And I'm standing there looking at him going, let me get this straight, you want me to go, you're actually going to pay to send me to Venice to hang out in St. Mark's Square? And he said, yeah. I was like, I'm going to really like this job. Uh, so I went to... Um, I went to Venice, and the reason why I'm telling this story because it was my first introduction to Baldassar uh, Castiglione. I installed myself in the Cafe Florian and held court, sipping cappuccino after cappuccino, uh, as I interviewed tour guides. And one guy, one of the guides, got really passionate as he was telling me why it was um, he was qualified to lead tours throughout Italy. And he took out uh, Castiglione's book of the Courtier, and he said that he led his tour groups all around Italy reading passages out of the book. Uh, the whole concept of the Elizabethan gentleman, he said, was founded in this book. And it's such an accurate description that so few have of Renaissance Italy at that time. That made a huge impression on me. Not as big an impression as the Linguini with razor clamps, but it still made a big impression. So I'm thrilled that I'm finally going to be going to the city that inspired this book. And I love the whole idea of the Urbino Press Award, of reestablishing this Renaissance court now peopled by journalists, particularly now when it seems like the journalism profession is under assault and so many newspapers are cutting staff. What Castiglione did in his day, providing this remarkable and readable historic account and chronicle of his time is what we, I hope, are trying to do today as reporters. And the idea that we can draw this line from Urbino through the years to the New York Times and the Washington Post and NPR and ABC News through this Urbino Press Award, I find just remarkably 
it, it, it makes me it makes me feel like there's even at a time where our profession is evolving to include blogs and websites along with newspapers and TV uh, and radio that there still will always be a need for people who can accurately chronicle uh, their time. So thank you so much for reminding me uh, of that with this beautiful award. Thank you very much.